The World of Darkness, initially, it was a pen and paper role-playing game universe uh, from the 90s. It started out with Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, and then there were a number of different games. I think there are seven or eight different role-playing games within the World of Darkness. Wraith the Oblivion is one of them, <laughs> of course. In our game, even though it's very, very much about wraiths and specters, vampires exist there, werewolves exist there, etc. So it's all like, a, it's, it's this super rich world. There's so much to build on. So the world is be, it's very much a thought through world. Nobody should have to know anything about the world of darkness or wraiths. This is the game we, where we introduce all these concepts uh, to the players. What's the matter? Don't you recognize yourself? So wraiths are, uh, well, they're dead. <laughs> the souls of the dead, right? Uh, with a, a strong tie, they're fettered to the to the to the skin lands, to our world, to the world of the living, uh, and. Uh, they're very much driven by their passions, uh, stuff that were important to them in life that kind of uh, transcends over to, to, uh, to when they're dead. The world of Wraith the Oblivion is like, it's this huge, amazing underworld with cities and rivers and castes and, 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 and guilds. And it's, it's an amazing place. Uh, what we've chosen to do in, in Afterlife is to not just overburden the player with all this you know information but to introduce them to it uh, in a nice way and basically build uh, a war a game that uh, plays out in what's called the shadow lands it's like the, the part of the underworld that is closest to the world of the living and basically gradually introduce them to what a wraith is you learn by playing you learn for this game, we chose to build on the concepts rather than the mechanics of, of the uh, uh, pen and paper game. Um, I love role playing games, uh, but for Wraith, we wanted the player to focus on the narrative and the horror rather than numbers uh, and, and those type of mechanics. So there are basically no visible numbers at all in the game. Uh, they're all represented in, in different ways, but a, somebody who knows Wraith the Oblivion will definitely recognize parts of, of the of the rule set, you know, and 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 hopefully like <laughs> how we've chosen to uh, interpret them in this game. Ed, come find me. We wanted to focus on Wraiths and Wraith the Oblivion for this game. Uh, but there are Easter eggs, etc. There are things that you know, pe people who know about the vampires, etc. They, they will find stuff uh, by exploring uh, the mansion. Um, there are, of course, but, but there are also uh, things like uh, every wraith has a shadow, and that's a, a very, very important uh, feature in, in the role-playing games. Basically, when you die, you get split in half. There's your uh, shadow and your psyche. And your shadow is kind of like your dark half. It's your dark subconscious uh, that tries to uh, influence what you do, and it lies to you. And it also tells you the truth. It can be very helpful, but it can also lie. And it ultimately kind of wants your doom. <laughs> uh, uh, and that is the relationship between the player uh, and the shadow is a huge part of, of uh, Rake the Oblivion Afterlife. Maybe you can invite them back.